Hi, this is Julian for Pro Tools Expert, and this time I'm looking at the new Sonox Oxford Dynamic EQ. Dynamic EQ, I've, I've used and demonstrated a few times before on the site. I'm a big fan for very specific uses. They fit in really nicely into the, the broad spectrum of equaliser types. We've got static EQs, which we're all aware of, been around for years. We've got pitch tracking EQs, which I've, I've done some demonstration of recently, and Dynamic EQs. Dynamic EQs are really useful when there's a specific timbral change that happens some of the time during some program material. So you want to apply a particular EQ move some of the time, but not all of the time, based on the level of particular frequencies. Specific applications I use them for quite often. Solo violin they can be really useful for because they can get a little bit screechy in certain parts of their register. Uh, acoustic guitars, I like them when you get a particular kind of body resonance that happens just at certain parts of the fretboard and you can home in on those and just reduce them when they happen, but leave that EQ alone the rest of the time. So dynamic EQs are a good thing. What's specifically good about this Oxford Dynamic EQ? Well, the first thing, I think they've really nailed the user interface. Some other dynamic EQs can be a bit confusing to use. The, the interface can be a bit cluttered. And uh, I think they're putting more functionality into a simpler interface, which has got to be what you're aiming for when you're designing a plugin. One area that Sonox have really paid attention to in this EQ is Q gain dependency. That kind of sounds complicated, and it is a little bit complicated, but if we look at a Sonox Oxford EQ, what we find is that there's four different EQ types, and what they're, the difference between them is, is about Q gain dependency. As you change the gain of, in this example, a cut, you can find that it sounds nicer if the cue changes with the gain. Type 1 has minimal cue gain dependency. Basically, it's a constant cue equaliser, which means that as you reduce the gain, the cue stays the same. Type 3 is a very kind of popular shape for outboard equalisers. And uh, what you find is that as you change the gain, the cue widens the deeper you go, which gives a more consistent sound to the cut. And if you've got a moving EQ cut, if the gain is being automated, if you like, by the dynamic EQ process, this, they found, is the best shape to use. And that's what they use in the dynamic EQ. So looking at the UI, to begin with, we've got a really nice, big, clear spectrum analyzer, which we'll see in a minute. And we've got five bands of dynamic and static EQ. If you grab one of these control points, the round ones are the dynamic EQ, and you've got this triangle, which is a fixed static EQ, and you can use those two so you can have like a fixed offset and then have it dynamic against that and any combination of things that you'd like to do. So that works very nicely indeed. The controls for the dynamic bands are really simple in that uh, you've got a threshold, which we'd understand from a conventional compressor. Dynamics is roughly analogous to ratio and attack and release times. There are two detection modes, peak and onsets. They're quite interesting in that you can use peak, which just looks at the level, and you've got onsets, which looks at the speed of change, and you can make it home in on transients. Each band has its own separate set of controls, indicated by colour, and you can enable or disable the bands from here. You can monitor them or solo them, so you can listen to exactly what it is you're EQing, and you've got separate sidechain controls underneath. You can sidechain internally or externally, and you can filter the sidechain separately from the, from the processing band, which is really nice. It's one of my big things that I really like is the fact that if you home in on this, you enable the sidechain. The sidechain's usually tied to the, uh, to the band. So if I switch that off, we'll see that this sidechain kind of width control follows the band of EQ. But if we enable the sidechain here, we we'll find that you can process a different band to the one you're keying against, and you can adjust here. You've got filter type choices, you've got shelves and peaks for the processing band, and you've got uh, high and low pass and peaks for the sidechain. So really nice. Also, using this above and below, we can either do a reduction in a, in a kind of ducking compression type dynamic EQ move, or we can expand, we can do upwards expansion. So for example, when the frequency band that's being keyed goes above the threshold, it introduces a boost. So onto an example, here it is in use on a female vocal. And this singer, when she goes into the top of her register, 
gets a little bit tight in the top of the mid range, and things can get a little bit shrill if they're not left, uh, not kept in check. So that's exactly what I'm doing here with band four in the kind of two and a half k kind of region. The blue band, band one, is being used to catch a couple of plosives, which while they've been caught by a high pass filter on the way in, there's still a little bit too much bump in there when it's catching those plosives. So here we go with uh, the first example. Here it is without the uh, EQ applied. Oh, whilst under the floodlights, placed your hand upon my cheek and simply said, just stare me out. And bringing this in. Oh, whilst under the floodlights, placed your hand upon my cheek and simply said, just. And there, if we have a listen to this band one, and I solo it up, we can hear it's catching the, the plosives on the P. on that P there. However, the real business end is this uh, band four. And if we preview that one, there's not much happening in that section. But if we go on to a section where she goes up to higher up in her register, things start to get a little bit edgy. Listen to exactly what's going on. And it's around there that we really want to control. And that's exactly what it's doing, if you let it. Compared to... And again, it's, it's subtle, but there's plenty more range if you want to pull it down more. So what do I think of the Oxford Dynamic EQ? Well, I really like it because what I think they've done is they've combined a really good sounding EQ with a simple user interface. And it's the simple user interface that in some other dynamic EQs was maybe missing to some extent. They offered lots of control, but at the expense of complexity. And this offers everything that those other competitors do, and in some cases more, but in a simple, clean user interface that doesn't feel like it's getting in the way. I especially like the fact that you can key a different frequency to the one you're processing, and that's something that I'm not aware of another dynamic EQ that does that. The choice of peak and onsets in the detection section is new and original and seems to work extremely well. Negatives, very, very few actually. I found that you did need to move the, uh, the circle out of the way to grab the triangle if you wanted to do a, a static EQ against a, uh, a dynamic EQ, but it's a very minor point. And I think that every equaliser should have a high-pass filter built in. But if that's as much of a criticism as I've got of the Oxford Dynamic EQ, then that's really not counting for much. This is a fantastic equaliser, and uh, I recommend you try it out.